What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. We've got the beautiful third gen 5.9 here, the gas 5.9 and the first gen 5.9. You can actually enter to win this truck and it is done for good on August 4th. If you don't have a calendar ready to look, that is in 48 hours, two days. Two days until this giveaway is done for good. And you've also got two days before dual entry for this truck and that first gen. August 4th is your last full day. So. You guys have just over 48 hours left and the dual entry is gone. Bye-bye, sayonara, no longer available. Our highest bonus ever of 50 times entries is live right now. That's the highest bonus we've ever done. It is the highest bonus for this entire giveaway. There will not be a bonus higher than that for the entire duration of that giveaway right there. And it is the highest bonus for that giveaway right there. So if you wanna get 50 times entries, and it's only the last 48 hours, last two days to enter, if you're seeing this on August 2nd, that's it, you are almost out of time. Okay, so when you see this video, don't wait until August 4th at 10 p.m. to enter. Okay, if you do, that's fine. But I would just get that order now because waiting until the last day does not increase your odds. I know there's some people that are kind of superstitious. And they're like, oh, but if you wait till the last second, you win more. Well, not necessarily. Sometimes in the first week, sometimes in the middle of the giveaway, there's been no scientific proof of any like consistent thing with people waiting to the last second and it increasing their odds in any way. Um, we have winners that enter during any time of the giveaway all the way down to the last minute, just a couple of times, but for the most part, it's just random days throughout the entire giveaway. But I will say this, of our past five winners in a row, I think almost all the last five winners in a row, maybe more than that, all entered during dual entry when there were two trucks up for grabs at the same time. Why is that? Because when you enter during dual entry, they could have potentially gotten drawn twice. It doubles the drawings that you get to be put into. Instead of being put into one drawing, you're getting put into this drawing and this drawing. So when those names get drawn, there's two opportunities that it could be yours instead of just one. So why wouldn't you take that chance now? So today's video, I was gonna do a side-by-side -side of the third gen and the first gen. I'm gonna pull them out. I was gonna take them for a little bit of a drive. I'm gonna do a drive comparison in the first gen and then bump up to the 2005 here and do a drive along in this. And I wanted to show you guys just a little bit of a difference from the ride along in terms of you know, driving the trucks, sound on the interior of the cab, feel, steering wheel, shifting gear, stuff like that. Just to kind of let you, you know, see around the trucks, see the exhaust, how they sound side by side. Some of this stuff you guys may have already seen tidbits of here and there and just kind of piece it together to form your own opinion. For those of you who have not, let's do a side by side between the first generation of the 5.9 and the last generation of the 5.9. Let's get into it. This truck does have remote start, by the way. Keyless entry, remote start. Let's see here. This AC in this thing is phenomenal, by the way, but the AC is great in both of these trucks. Beautiful running truck, runs awesome. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little biased towards the third gen right now, just because um, I have driven it just a little bit and I love the way this thing drives. Um, I do like the manual transmission though. It just depends on what you want. It depends on what you like. I like both. I like them both for different reasons. I love the third gen for the creature comforts, like, you know, the four doors, the built automatic transmission for traveling. I don't, I don't prefer to shift gears when I'm traveling on and off interstates and stuff like that. That's just me. That's just preference. I know there's going to be some guys like, oh, suck it up. You know, it ain't so bad. I get it. I get it. I get it. Maybe I'm just becoming a little soft from, uh, compared to my early days in the YouTube world when everything had to be a five speed. And for the most part, I still believe that. Um, you know, a manual transmission overall is my pick for most Dodge vehicles. However, this truck, I do have the exception because it's got a Randy's built automatic transmission, which anybody that knows anything about Randy's transmissions, they last forever. For that reason, very biased in this truck.
first gen. We're gonna take this for a little drive first and give you a little side by side. So when you look in the interior of this thing, you got hand crank windows, which they did have power option back in the day. This one just didn't have the power option option on it. Uh, you got manual crank windows. You've got all manual gauges, so no digital gauging at all, not even for the miles. You've got manual four wheel drive on the floor, which that third gen that we have here is the same setup as this in terms of four wheel drive on the floor. They did make models that had the little switch right there for the four wheel drive, but the third gen that we have back at the barn there does not have that. But um, we got the stick with the by Felicia. It's my favorite part of the interior right there, but very simple. It's a bench style seat, which most of these trucks are sold like that. You know, hard plastic door panels, a little bit of wood trim here and there, nothing much. There's just not much to them, which to be fair, this isn't a competition of which one has more modern amenities because obviously this truck would lose that. This truck has different things that people prefer more than the other and vice versa. This truck's a manual, everything about it is fully mechanical, whether that's the four wheel drive, the manual transmission, the fuel system, everything about this truck is fully mechanical. There are like essentially no electronics other than the radio and the lights and stuff like that. Pretty much nothing in terms of electronics on this vehicle to cause you any problem. So you have to take that into consideration when you're looking at this truck. And yes, that is a pile of, it is actually clean merch, um, but it got kind of thrown around in here, my bad. I slid it out of the seat, out of the way further, and it just kind of made it look like a little bit of a mess. But we do have, we do have some wonderful merch options that can actually win you this truck, plus $5,000 of cash. So take a look at the site if you want to get entered to win this thing. First gen steering, okay. Nothing wrong with it. It's actually really nice in this truck. I've, uh, I have owned first gens that did not have very nice steering. This is not one of them. This thing actually steers very, very nice. But in terms of the cab noise in this thing, this thing's, the engine itself is actually not, not that loud compared to some of the other diesels I've been in. The only thing this cab suffers from is like exterior cab noise. So like wind noise and stuff like that. There's not really as much sound dampening insulation in this truck compared to the third gen or any of the newer trucks. So you do hear some of that stuff a little bit more. But it does have some luxuries. It's got a radio, it's got good air conditioning, and the seat is adjustable. Yes, the bench here is adjustable. I can pull the lever down low and I can slide this bench forward and backwards. So if you're a little bit taller or maybe a little bit shorter, you can adjust the bench. So we're making some progress here. In terms of the first gen in general, they did not make a four-door model of any kind in the diesel first-gen Cummins trucks. Lots of guys will swap the 88 and older body styles for a crew cab truck with a short bed and they'll swap it with an extended cab long bed first-gen frame, a drivetrain. That's a very popular thing to do if you want a four-door first-gen, but in terms of a factory option, they did not make that. So that would be one of the things that, if that's a big deal to you, um, there was not really ever an option in these trucks with a diesel in it from factory, but if you don't need it and you're not going to daily drive it or uh, you don't have kids or whatever the case might be, you might not even need the four doors anyways. That's just kind of a personal preference thing and situational. They're hard to find. So you're not just going to drive around then in this thing and uh, be like, oh man, it's too bad. They're just everywhere. So my truck just blends in with everybody. So, okay. You can't find these trucks hardly anywhere. We are struggling sometimes to find them every month. We always do, but it's not like it used to be, okay? So these are gonna stand out. Everybody's gonna wanna buy it off you. Everybody's gonna say, oh yeah, will you take this, will you take that? Every old guy at every gas station is gonna try to pull out his checkbook and sweet talk you into a deal. That's just kind of what you have to deal with when you drive one of these. And the first gen Cummins here, alongside the second gen 12 out Cummins with the five speed, those two trucks, Referring to this one specifically in this moment are probably some of the most affordable and cheapest trucks to repair and maintain ever. Like injectors, a full set, two or 300 bucks. A turbo, two or 300 bucks. I mean, the list goes on and on. Everything from, you know, fuel lines to brakes to, like I said, the injectors, the, I mean, just everything, turbo, everything. So affordable. Now, 
A third gen isn't like out of this world crazy expensive to maintain compared to a first gen. It's still more affordable than a lot of the other diesel truck options out there in the market. But in terms of trucks that came from Dodge or from Ram, whichever one you want to call it, this truck is hands down between this truck and a second gen 12 out the most affordable trucks to drive, own, and maintain, hands down. But at the end of the day, the thing that matters most is this thing is just so freaking good looking. I mean, nothing else really matters. So let's slide on into the third gen here. We're gonna take this thing for a quick little ride. And let me just tell you this, this truck, this truck here, I just love it. And I'll tell you why. That's the first generation of the 5.9 Cummins trucks. This is the last generation of the 5.9 pre-emissions trucks, the pre-emission 5.9 trucks. So um, all 5.9s were pre-emissions, but this was the last model of truck from Dodge that you could get a 5.9 at all. Which is really unfortunate because it was also the last year of any kind of pre-emissions. When I say last year, not the last year, 07 was the last year, but it was the last, the last generation of these trucks that you could get that were pre-emissions trucks that didn't have the EGRs and you know, then of course it went to DPFs and DEFs and all that. It just kept on going down the list of more and more things that had to be added on and regulated, which isn't their fault as much as it is the government trying to tell them how they have to build the vehicles. I'm sure they'd rather not do that if they didn't have to. But sticking to the spirit of our comparison here, when you get in the interior of this truck, it is very different. It's got bucket seats with the center console. You've got a bench in the back that is a 60-40 split that you can actually flip up one side and uh, flip up the other if you want flip it all up it's got a much bigger and more refined dash it's got some digital pieces to the instrument panel it's got all power windows power locks power mirrors it does have this is not a factory option but it was added an apple carplay head unit which you can technically get a flip out one that goes into that first gen if you want if you, if you really want that you can do that so that doesn't really count as like a factory difference but um just comparing these two trucks for what they are currently it does have this that truck has ac and a max ac which this truck has the same two options in it now the difference is this also has power seats much quieter in the cab like if you turn this off it is very quiet you can hear the truck but hardly um much better sound dampening doors seem to be thicker with more sound dampening and stuff like that there's some type of like insulation like stuff behind this door that's tacked on it that stuff helps way better weather stripping and stuff like that stuff behind the dash in the firewall in the floor so there's just more things to keep this truck quiet um, i'm not saying it's like a cadillac inside the interior comparing to that other truck much quieter much more refined and what's crazy is if you look at the interior of this truck and all the options and all the power stuff and how you know honestly modern it looks and feels when you, you got to think about if you're coming from a truck like that that was just a little bit more than 10 years before this closer to 15 but 14 years later this is what you're sitting in it's just crazy because i'm looking at trucks now and i'm thinking in 14 years i mean that that's it doesn't seem like that long i guess it is a long time in vehicle talk but man what are our vehicles gonna look like in 14 years if this is what they went from that to this in 14 years which you looking back now you're thinking well it's not that crazy of a change in luxury but if you came from a first gen and you drove that sucker for 10 years and you came to trade it in on something like this you were thinking like holy smokes it's i'm in a spaceship you know what i mean like obviously that's being dramatic but i'm saying like that was probably the feeling that you got was like dang this is this is high tech this is comfortable and luxurious like that was probably the feeling. But the best part about that is after those years of going from that truck to something like this, they still had a 5.9 at the time, and it was still pre-emissions, and it was still reliable. That would be like the best kind of like gain in terms of like a trade-out, is knowing that all those years they pretty much made an engine that, you know, the main basis of the engine was the same concept. Obviously, there's total differences between, you know, a VE pump first gen to a P pump second gen 12 out to a, a vp44 and then a common rail commons like obviously there's differences and fueling systems and stuff like that and power outputs they're not the same but in terms of the trucks themselves and the basis that they are on the platform they're on in terms of the reliability it was probably nice knowing back in the day going from that truck to this truck that you had a good confidence that you could trust it because 
for the most part, they tried to keep the overall principles of the truck and the way that it was built the same to keep it reliable while giving you the more desired features to make it more comfortable. Now we are gonna take this thing down the road and just keep in mind, with this AC off, this thing is so much more, so much more quiet. This thing drives so, so, so nice. Fourth gen brother here. Yes, sir. Fourth gen brother passing on by. Obviously drives different. Power delivery is a lot different. You still have a ton of torque, just like you do with a first gen. Now that is a cool, cool ride. Holy smoke. He knows he's the man driving that thing. You know, you don't have to tell him. He knows. Truck drives different. It feels different. It still has a similar sound, not quite the same, of course. Uh, this truck definitely sounds different than a first gen 12 out, but in terms of that diesel growl with that Cummins sound, you just can't mistake it for being anything other than a Cummins. So you still hear that behind the dash when you're driving it. The difference is the wind noise is like almost zero compared, again, we're comparing, we're not comparing to anything other than the other truck that we just drove. Compared to the first gen we just drove, the interior is so much more quiet. The suspension is a little bit softer. It's still it's still firm enough to let you know it's a three-quarter ton truck, but it is softer and the power and the drivability is just a lot, it's just a lot different. Like this, you can just, I mean, obviously I'm not shifting gears, so that's that's one difference, but the power is just, it just feels like it's so much more there and it's definitely a lot more responsive in terms of the first gen like the first gen is just a different beast it's just a totally different machine in terms of how it feels and operates and drives this thing it just feels like it has so much more power instantly we got a fifth gen brother up ahead here we support our fifth gen brothers as well looks like this one might be struggling just a little bit though there are more of these trucks around, not as many as there used to be, but there are more of these trucks around than there are first gen. So in terms of the cool factor, it might be reduced just a little bit, not much because it's still a Cummins. It's a 5.9, it's pre-emissions, it's clean. So not entirely, but it's it's got a little bit less of the cool factor, of course. Even though it is a built automatic, it's not a stick. And I know that there's still a stigma around any automatic transmission in a Dodge, even though this one's built by Randy's, as I've said lots and lots of times, I'm not going to stop saying it. Um, just in case somebody's watching a video that hasn't seen previous ones, it is built by Randy's Transmissions out of Utah. So it runs, drives, and shifts amazingly. But it does have an automatic, and I know it's not as cool. The downside is this truck's got four doors and it's an automatic, which means your wife could drive this or your girlfriend. Do you really want that? I mean, that is a downside. I'm not going to lie. Just mess. And I'm sure there's actually some ladies watching this that are like, I can drive a manual better than my man. And I, unfortunately, that is... That is very sad, but I would not be surprised. And in terms of cost of maintenance and repairs on this truck versus the first gen, although it is not near as expensive as some of the other options out on the market in terms of like Duramaxes and Fords and stuff like that, it's still, without a doubt, it is going to cost more to maintain this truck in terms of fixes and repairs than it would a 5912 valve. It's just the nature of it. but. I also feel like you have to take into consideration the trade-offs you do have with a truck like this versus a first gen is you've got the four doors, you've got the cruise control, you've got the slightly better riding suspension, you do have a much quieter interior, you do have you know a lot of these amenities and things that you don't have in the first gen. So you have to take into consideration what's more important, whether it's creature comforts and those luxuries and amenities versus old school, super cool, hard to find, but maybe it's lacking a few of the things that this truck has and vice versa. Maybe this truck is lacking some of the things like fully mechanical drivetrain and engine and everything, everything else. And maybe that's more important to you than creature comfort. So take those into consideration, but those are definitely the main differences between these two trucks. But I will tell you this to conclude, it's not cheaper to buy a first gen than it is a third gen like this in this kind of condition. And it's certainly not cheaper to buy a third gen in this condition than it is to buy a first gen in the condition of the one that we have here. These trucks, believe it or not, I paid 
the exact same price for that first gen with a five speed and the regular cab and the long bed and all that stuff as they did for this third gen. That's a one owner truck with 130,000 miles that's been meticulously maintained. I bought them for the same price, like to the dollar, the same price. If you're looking at these two and you're trying to look at the market and you're going, hmm, what do I want to spend? You know, you can buy a ragged out first gen for eight to 10,000 bucks, but you can also buy a ragged out third gen for eight to 10,000 bucks. You can buy a really nice first gen for 30 grand. You can buy a really nice third gen for 30 grand. So, you know, these trucks are kind of in a weird place in the market where it's not like in the past where it was like, oh, well, it's used, it's worth a lot less money, it's older, it's worth less. It's like these trucks are in a market of their own. The pre-emission stuff is kind of in its own market. It's, it doesn't really follow the same market trend as everything else. So you have to take that into consideration. For example, my wife, she drives the exact same truck. We give away trucks that we trust and we own. We actually own the trucks that we give away. And they're, some of the trucks that we give away are the exact same as our daily drivers, our personal trucks that we own and we love. So rest assured that if we would personally own it and drive it, we probably trust it for you as well. Man, that thing doesn't get old looking at. I know back in the day, first gens weren't really sought after because they had been the same body style for so many years and people were kind of getting tired of Dodge not changing anything up, but holy smokes. Looking at those trucks now, there's just something like, I don't even know. But it gets me every time. I drive up and I see a first gen sitting in the barn. And I'm like, now I know why. The, I know why people love these things. Not only are they freaking reliable, super simple, super affordable to maintain, but they are some darn good looking trucks. So at the end of the day, this was not a video to condemn one or the other as king of the debate here. Uh, it's simply just a look at the two trucks and the differences to consider when looking at these trucks, especially in the market today, because there's not really like an obvious better option in terms of price point. These trucks run for what you see here, super clean third gen goes for the almost the exact same price as a super clean first gen. And that's just kind of where the market's at on these things. And I don't think that's gonna change anytime soon, especially for the pre emission stuff. We're talking 07 and older. Um, I don't think that market's gonna go away. I think it's gonna kind of maintain uh, whatever these are going for in really clean shape, these are going to be very close to it. And I think that's going to stick for quite some time. But on that note, that's going to put a wrap on this video. If you want to enter to win both of these trucks at the exact same time, remember, when you see this video on August 2nd, you have 48 hours left to get 50 times entries into both of these giveaways at the same time. And then that deal is off. And then this giveaway is gone for good. So if you want to get in, do it now. Link in bio or just go to lmpgear.com. Thanks so much, guys. Peace.